On a Sunday morning in 1969, the town of Murchison had an alien visitation. We lived uh, about a kilometre and a half out of town when the uh, big sonic boom pattern happened. I ran outside. We didn't see the fireball, but the, the sound of the sonic booms, which went on for quite a period of time, was like window-shaking stuff. Being the space age, some thought it was alien invaders. Then locals started finding strange charred rocks in their fields. Over 100 kilograms of meteorite were picked up by the excited locals. At first, it appeared to be like many other meteorites, tightly packed with metals and minerals. Well, basically it consists of silicate minerals, very much the same things we see on rocks on the Earth's surface. But the way the silicate minerals appear, quite different. But as more was collected and analysed, its growing importance became clear. I think so. This is probably where we found it. John's mum, Mary Ann, found several pieces in a nearby paddock. And you kept some of it? There it is here, yes. Well, that, that's a, that, by the way, is a smaller piece. Mum found yeah. a bigger piece that got uh, donated to the Australian National University. It wasn't just the quantity of rock retrieved that made Murchison special. Wow. Interesting. <laughs> oh, cool. That's like, it's got like a sort of almost gasoline -y sort of. Me that's right. Me yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. So all these yeah. years later. It know, still yeah. smells. That's yeah, 50 yeah. years later and yeah. you can yeah. still get the odour off right. it. And that smell was the first clue this was no ordinary meteorite. Well, it's like a little bit tarry, but it's kind of uh, pleasant. Uh, you don't smell it too much, <laughs> but it tells us there are lots of uh, compounds, organic compounds, that are volatile. That means they escape the rock still mm -hmm. to the present day. And uh, it is very rich in organics. Organics are complex chemical compounds built from the six Chinops elements. And Murchison was packed with them. There were more than 80 amino acids found in Murchison. They are sugars, alcohols, all kinds of uh, organic molecules that are also found in life. Um, but yeah. uh, the building blocks, we think the building blocks for life. So the amino acids are the kinds of things that sort of help make up our DNA, Yes, right? exactly. It was an important discovery, a 4.6 billion year old clue to the origins of the solar system and us. The Murchison meteorite became one of the most studied meteorites of all time. And for good reason. It was the first evidence for organic compounds coming from outer space. And it could be evidence for something that was speculated about as far back as the ancient Greeks. They called it panspermia. Does life on Earth come from outer space? From something like this? This is as close as we can get in our modern world to the inhospitable volcanic surface of early Earth. In a prebiotic environment where we think life would have formed, there would have been rocks everywhere, meteorites coming in, temperature fluctuations, very messy systems going on. Anna Wang and fellow astrobiologist Luke Stella are using chemicals found in Murchison to work out what might have happened when meteorites crashed into this volatile world. They think that some of the chemicals released could have provided the ingredients that would eventually lead to life. Not by making living cells, but what came before, protocells. And essential to creating those cells are these things, bubbles. So basically what you're doing here is blowing soap bubbles, and what we're trying to do in water is blowing the soap bubbles that form the membranes of protocells. So these are like model primordial cells that maybe existed way before life as we know it. So what we want to understand is if you rewind time before all that evolution happened, what is the simplest sort of membrane that could do all the work of like growth, division, let nutrients in, let waste out? An early pioneer of this research, Dr David Diemer, pointed to one organic compound found in Murchison that might build bubbles, a fatty acid. This is what fatty acids look like. Yeah. And so there would have been an oily substance in the Murchison meteorite itself. Mm -hmm. So this is what it looks like when it's dissolved in water. Mm -hmm. It looks a bit frothy. It's like 
soapy water. And that's exactly what it is, it's soap. So once you put this oily stuff yeah. um, into water, with the right conditions, it'll self-assemble into membranes that look like the cell membranes that make us up. And then you have the beginnings of what might look like a really primitive cell. Luke is combining a synthetic version of the Murchison meteorite fatty acid material with bubbling thermal springs to discover where the primitive cells can form, which could be the first step towards life. And after just a couple of hours, we're ready to see. OK, so this is a sample from the pool just over there. Yeah. So now we can look, through, look at this through the microscope and see what we see. Yeah, totally. Yeah. That. Um, we're hoping to see cell-like structures in our liquid. And as it turns out, we don't have just one or two. There are loads. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, so a little... When we add a dye, we can see this pre-life vividly. The bubbles have formed around and captured organic material. In this protective shell, it might be possible for it to evolve, become more complex. This could be, just possibly, the chemical blueprint for life. There could be systems on Earth that could be making materials like this. We don't know for sure. But we have very clearly with the Murchison meteorite an example of what could be made in space and what has been delivered to Earth. If meteorites brought the starter kit for living cells to Earth, they could have done it in other places too. And that's a pretty mind-boggling thought.